art uh, became very important in my life during medical school. Um, I had lots of spare time, free time, and I decided uh, to get into oil painting to actually act on uh, this uh, Oedicus's uh, influence on me. And as uh, during the four years of medical school, as I painted more and more, the desire, passion for art grew tremendously. Uh, so that uh, by the time I was finishing medical school, I was really in a conflict whether to continue in medicine, neurology, uh, or to go into art. Well, friends of mine convinced me to at least finish internship because that was already set or we went to a matching program. So I went to uh, spend a year in Madison, Wisconsin at University Hospitals there and finished my internship, saved my money, and um, but then left medicine entirely and moved to Washington, D.C. Uh, where I engaged in art. I had a lot of art exhibits, um, some pieces were sold, um, there were a lot of critical comment, you know, positive critical reviews took place, and uh, did a lot of art historical investigations too. The, uh, at, sort of towards the end of three years, I started to feel very guilty that I had all of this knowledge of neurology and wasn't doing anything with it. In this specific piece, uh, we have the red background and neuronal profiles from human cerebral cortical neurons, uh, all interacting, intertwined, intermingling. And we also have a background photograph that's been highly transformed. Uh, the transformation is done to be in keeping with how our memories work for visual memories. Uh, we recollect a large number of visual events in our lives, uh, but we don't have uh, filing cabinets of photographs. Uh, it's transformed into a different, uh, uh, totally differently into neural networks. Um, and so the visuals are, are transformed also. So the photograph was an outdoor installation piece that I built on Cornwallis Island in the high Canadian Arctic, uh, very close to the magnetic North Pole. And it's very barren terrain, just rock and snow. And I took the available stones that were there and built a shelter that two people could sit under to protect themselves from uh, the howling wind on, on that uh, plane. The reciprocal altruism refers to two people interacting, supporting each other, and as the shelter is there for two people to be. And the shelter is, is a shelter that's, uh, that I built. Um, now, the, the piece itself um, that does have this wide network of neurons which interact, but towards the center, a little bit to the right, there's one little area that's disconnected, it's separate. It's, it, I purposely did that, and that's sort of a self-portrait. And that's the artist, a little separate from society, looking on society and commenting about it. So that's sort of one place where I put myself into the picture. Well, in this purple one, we do have, again, the neural, neuronal background incorporated in it as in all of the emergent sequences are is my brain scan, MRI brain, brain scan, uh, my electroencephalograms, thinking about different artistic topics. Um, it incorporates uh, me as the creative artist, the physical structure of my brain, and the physiological structure of my brain is incorporated uh, with the electrical activity. So those are inter intermingled, they're, they're there, and you have to look for it, but you'll find it if, you, if you're looking for it. The underlying photograph, which has been somewhat transformed in this case, is a, a person walking by himself on a street in Rome, Italy, that I took. And the person's pensive, thinking to himself, just like when I'm in the creative process of contemplating a new artwork, I spend a lot of time thinking about what it is that I want to incorporate in the piece. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I spend more time thinking about it, planning it out, than I actually do doing it, even though as I'm doing it also, there's always I stop and then rethink it and, and re-ponder re it too. But there's an, a lot of planning that goes into my artwork. There's nothing spontaneous. It's all really thought out and then just spontaneously things do pop up. Things that unexpectedly show up that I then work on, change, modify. So the spontaneity does exist. But there always is a, a underlying foundation that I've planned in, in advance. And just as that, that person is walking by himself thinking, my own artwork is, is in that sense, also creative, solitary um, endeavor. When I create a work of art, the intention is um, for the, to have some resonance with the public. And, and certainly adults, a lot of adults do enjoy it, but children do too. Uh, particularly delightful was the exhibit in January uh, through March at the Lebesnik Center for the Arts uh, in Michigan City, not too, about an hour drive from here. 
and they have a lot of school groups coming through there as part of the education and the public school system, all different ages. And, and it, it's really fun to see kids uh, see that installation piece and sort of relate to it immediately. Pretty much even small kids, you know, four or five years old, realize there's something biologic, something neurologic about the installation itself. So the people were able to tune in of all ages into that piece. And it was a really very, very interesting, lively installation.